Well, it's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord today. It truly is. And uh, got a, a, a whole lot of birthdays this week. I know Buzz Franklin is now in his late 30s. <laughs> and so, <laughs> who, el who else got a birthday last week? Who? Betsy. Betsy. All right. She's not even in her late thirties, but she's yeah. Uh, somebody's let's see, two somebody's got a birthday coming up Monday, right? We know that. Kevin. Kevin. Kevin has Okay. Okay, so a lot of birthdays coming up and uh, got birthdays to celebrate today. So let's sing happy birthday. Would you like to? Happy birthday. I could sing it all after last week. You know, the way it is with us recovering addicts is like we get addicted to something, and I just got addicted to singing last week, and I couldn't talk for two days. <laughs> that was a beautiful thing to be part of. Thank you all so much for putting that on. And 101 years. Wow, that's amazing. Um, some announcements we have to make is... Uh, there are some COVID-19 test kits out in the Narthex that are free for the taking if you uh, want uh, to take some of those. Uh, somebody asked me when I was about to retire. I retired in Wyoming, what was it, 67? When did I retire? Oh, you weren't paying attention. Yeah. See? <laughs> I retired in 67, and, you know, let me tell you this story because I'm about to die, okay? She, she's about to kill me. But uh, somebody said, wow, what are you looking forward to in retirement? I said, absolutely no more administrative board meetings <laughs> and no more charge conferences. Well, guess what? Administrative board meeting is today at 3 o'clock. <laughs> And charge conference is uh, October 30th, and that's going to be at um, Lookout Mountain United Methodist Church, and it's going to be at 3 o'clock. So uh, never say never, because God will get you. That's what it's like. Um, they're going to be, next acolyte training will be August 28th at noon, and there will be food and a fun activity and acolyte training. So... Uh, Q&A church meeting on Monday, August 29th at 7 p.m. in the church sanctuary regarding the disaffiliation process. There's a, um, well, last week was a deadline for the for the questions. Um, and that about the most efficient way to handle that is was just have questions ahead of time so we can know how to respond. The recipient of this hand, year's hand stitch quilt is Karen Castleberry. Gable? Gable? Gable. Gable. Okay. Uh, cousin of Sarah Moore who sold her the ticket. Sarah, you did a, did a good job. Again, this year Sarah sold the most tickets, followed by Norma Jean Gilly. Uh, we appreciate Mary Jo Jablonski, friend of Bonnie Casey, for donating the quilt. Total of $856 was raised for missions. Thank you for your support and prayer. Sarah, how did y'all do on the Optimists tournament yesterday? I would say that uh, we're going to net close to $9,000. Okay. Okay. So that's, a, that's a, a very needful ministry out in the world. And, and, and for those of you there, thank you. For those of you who were standing close to me, when I talk golf balls, do not tell the congregation what I said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Teaching the class on baptism, uh, uh, 
during the 10 a.m. Sunday school class time classes for children or adults who are believers but have not been baptized, for parents of recently born children <coughs> who need to be baptized, and for people who need to renew the vows to God made at their baptism. And so this class is to prepare people for baptism or renewal or just to learn about baptism. Pretty, uh, pretty informative. If you have children who want strange acolytes, please give the names and contact info to Wileen, and we will be in touch with them. Charge conference, we already said that. If you have a prayer request or a joy that needs announcing, write it down on one of the prayer cards from the pew, put it in the offering plate during collection time to be read during prayer time. Are there any other announcements we need to make? Anything else? Nothing. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. United Methodist Hymnal 462. <coughs> Turn to page 794 in your United Methodist hymnal and join with me in reading of the psalm. In you, Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. 
Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have learned from my birth. I have been an example to many, for you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. For my enemies seek concerning me. Those who watch for my life consult together, saying, God has forsaken him, pursue and seize him, for there is no deliverer. O oh God, be not far from me. For oh my God, make haste about me. Would you join with me in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As you get out and move around, would you say to your neighbor, the peace of Christ be with you. If you would prepare an offering for the Lord, the usher can come forth. You're in charge. Tell them to bring that back for you. Yes, <laughs> Lord, we thank you again that you have taken care of us. We thank you that you have provided for us. God, we thank you that you use us in, in your provision. Use us as 
we provide for others in your name and for your glory. Lord, as we return unto you a portion of that which you've given us, we pray that you would magnify it, that you would multiply it, and that you would use it and have this church use it for the furtherance of your glorious kingdom. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Sunday school people and our people who are graduating and moving up. Guys, tough. Any others? Everybody, I'm teaching a temporary class on baptism, and but in my history, generally I've taught the, you know, the mature adults, and you don't get certificates when you graduate from that class. You <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there you go. <laughs> I guess that's the big certificate, isn't it? Yeah, a um, lot like to. I, I, I'm just. I did, oh, my baptism class. Who's in my baptism class right now? Who was there this morning? You got them? Okay. So, uh, so uh, I, I really appreciate the education in this church. Um, one of the things I brought up in our baptism class is 
there's a new denizen out there in the world. There is a new creature, and they're all over the Internet, and they're all over mass media. They're all over YouTube. They're all over TikTok. They're called influencers. And if you watch them, there's a lot of that influence you don't want around. Well, Sunday school teachers are influencers too. And we need to not surrender the influence to the people of the world. We need to assume influencing people about the kingdom of God and their place in it. So, um, really quickly, um, Sarah, you made a trip to Kentucky. Would you let us know how that went? Brenda, you went, did you let us know? <clears throat> so, um, I have a classmate who's, who lives up there. She's not in the flood area, but uh, she was my contact person. She put us in touch with a volunteer fire department in Sand Lick, which is close to Whitesburg, Fletcher County. It's like, it was all the same things that Sarah did. Um, but I got in touch with, with the lady from the volunteer fire department. Since we have the volunteer fire department here, you know how that runs on donations and the help of the community. And so we um, collected these thanks to GT and Joanne, and then the, the body of this church is just so generous. And we were able to take $1,425 plus all the supplies from GT and Joanne. And the lady who was my contact right there, um, we stayed in touch. And I said, if you, if somebody needs something that you don't have, you send me a text and we'll see if we can get it. So we made a big Home Depot run and we took a humidifier for an elderly lady. We took wheelbarrows, shovels, cleaning supplies, mold test kits, uh, laundry detergent, soap. And we get there in the fire department. <clears throat> it was a little bigger than our building over here, but very similar. And the um, tables they had set up were kind of bare. And so we helped, with all of your help, we helped to fill up those tables. And people were coming in and getting supplies. One lady that came while we were there said there were 11 people in her house now because two families had lost their homes and they came to her. There was seven adults. And children and she needed soap. So the need is great. I, I think we have had a few more donations come in and I'm kind of working on what to do with those but there was a post this morning from the school board there. They were hoping to start uh, open the schools back up maybe in a month but they completely lost two elementary libraries and one middle school library. So that might be something we want to look at in the future. The great tragedy in tragedies, especially in our nation, is once they go through the news cycle, people tend to forget uh, that those people will be needing help for years ahead. Some people have, are literally having to start their lives over with nothing. So thank, thank both of you for making that contact for us. I think that's one of the most effective ways you can help. 
is find those places yourself in those communities and see what they need and go help. So I'm sure we'll be sending more and doing more. So, uh, so you keep us up to speed on what we need to be doing. Okay. We come before the Lord in prayer today, quite a few prayer requests. Claire Stanfield said that Ezra Dubel broke his ankle playing football. Okay. And John Waters Gentry hurt his leg playing football. Atticus Anderson broke his little finger playing football. <laughs> football may be a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> but uh, it's serious. With, I mean, it's, it's real injury. Pray for him. Please do. Um, Tom asked us to pray for Jim Blaylock, who has serious skin cancer, and the treatment where it's at is just very difficult to do. So pray for Jim. Patty Graham appreciates all the prayers for her mother, Bobby Forrester. Jim, is it Shul or Skull? Skull? Jim Skull has COVID and Parkinson's, and that's Betsy's brother-in-law. So pray for Jim. Bertha Aaron, Wileen's our sister-in-law, her mother passed away at 94 years old, 97 years old. Bertha went to visit and broke her leg. So uh, there's a lot going on in that family. So pray for, pray for Bertha. Katie Hunter starts her new job at Fairland Elementary this week. All right. Uh, it's, it's still a mystery to me, but yeah, y'all go do that. <laughs> Yeah, they, uh, they, I think those little kids abuse adults. <laughs> but, uh, but congratulations. Thank you. And you're going to be an influencer there, too. So thank you for being there. Lastly, McCaig's uh, grandfather, Jim Durham, passed away. We've been praying for Jim. And uh, the funeral is tomorrow. And so uh, pray, for, pray for Leslie. Pray for their family. Uh, there are some things that only God can bring comfort in. And so let's pray for them. Any other prayer requests that we have? Let's bow our heads and pray. Almighty God, you tell us to love our neighbor as ourself. Lord, in reference to these prayers and understanding these prayers, let us ask the question, what if it were us? How would we pray? Who would we want to pray with us and for us? What if it were us in Kentucky having lost everything we have? What would we, we need the church to be and to do? Lord, as we ponder this in our hearts, we lift up these names to you in prayer. We will keep these prayers these persons before you in prayer in the coming week, in the coming days. And Lord, we pray that you would direct your riches and your grace and your power and your comfort toward those places in Kentucky. Lord, help us be able to help even more. Lord, as we pray this day, we do pray for our nation pray for our state. We pray for our local government. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to live in this land. We know it can be better. Help us be people who make it better. Lord, but thank you for the privilege of just life itself. As we are your people in this world, Lord, we have heard that statement about influencers. And we realize that that's precisely why you have us in this world to influence people into accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior and as their Lord, doing his bidding, living his kingdom life. Lord, as we pray, we remember to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. Children?
for him with joyful songs. And that's what we did. And one thing that I was really impressed with was, Joseph, how you got up and you made a request for a song last Sunday. And we all sang the song. What was that song? This Little Light. That's right. This Little Light of Mine. And, uh, and I think that we all need to do that. So, so one thing I wanted to tell you all is never be afraid to go up and sing with us in the choir. Sometimes you all do that. Never be afraid to just get up and sing, even if you don't know all the notes. And uh, I was going to make a connection with what Reese talks about with influencers. The guys that I sit next to in the choir, they heavily influence me because I can't read music. So if I'm sitting next to Robert, if he's singing off, I'm going to be singing off with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be following them to a T because I don't know what, what I'm singing, but I know that they do. So, so be influencers. If you guys get up there and sing in the choir or if you're singing, you're influencing the other kids and the people that are watching you to sing and you're giving them hope. And Joseph, you making that request to say this little light, that was a big influence too. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for these children. We pray that uh, their example will influence us. First reading is from Hebrews 12, 18 through 29. I'm reading from the NIV. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast or such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that that which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. The word of God for the people of God. All rise for the reading of the gospel. On the Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites, don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? 
When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I very often am accused of being an old-fashioned kind of guy. I remember one of our bishops one time was accosted by a feminist theologian, and she told him, she said, Bishop, you're so old-fashioned, I bet you still believe in a personal devil. And he said, yes, I do, and I don't like her either. <laughs> And, uh, but, you know, it's something the church is reticent to talk about, but the scripture talks about it today. What happens when people don't come to know the Lord? You believe in hell? I do. And I'm going to talk about it just a little bit today. One of the reasons that I think it's a subject that's needful is that do you know that the person who was most descriptive and told us most about hell was Jesus Christ. And he tells us in terms that are forbidding and painful. And it's sort of like when John in Revelation is trying to tell us about heaven is that heaven is so beautiful that even the best words that he can use in the human lexicon cannot adequate, adequately explain. Likewise, when Jesus is using words and when they're using words to talk about hell in the Bible, it is conversely so hard that there's nothing in the human lexicon that can convey it. Um, do you think people are going to hell? I know one guy is. Okay, one guy that I know of. And we were playing golf yesterday and I had on a new pair of golf shorts and and there's this in some pants and some dress slacks, somebody has sewn a little bitty pocket down inside your right hand pants pocket. Yeah, and your keys get tangled up in it, your T's get tangled up in it, everything in your pocket gets tangled up in it. You gotta pull your pocket out and do that. That guy right there. <laughs> that guy, yeah. Uh, of course, that's just a joke. I don't know who that was. Uh, but the thing about it is, yes, there are people who will be going to hell. Yes, there is a hell. This Hebrews passage deals with it. I, I, I think, Judy, this song is so significant today. It says, uh, Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? You can't turn him away. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him how lost I would be. This passage that Judy just read to us talks about the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. That's what Old Testament and New Testament means. Did you know that? The word testament means covenant. And there is this descriptive thing in Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews is arguing to historically Hebrew people the idea of salvation by grace through faith. And as a that as a replacement of the old covenant, which was also salvation by grace through faith, but really got corrupted into following a bunch of rules. But this is the way that the writer of Hebrews contrasts those two different covenants. He said, you have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire. Now he's explaining Moses on Mount Sinai 
receiving the commandments of God. And listen to this, listen to this language. It says, you have not come to something that can be touched. You've not come to a blazing fire. You've not come to a dread darkness. You have not come to a gloomy thing. You have not come to a stormy tempest. You have not come to a voice whose words made the hearers beg not to speak anymore. Man, that's Mount Sinai. That is God meeting Moses on top of the mountain. And the voice of God was so terrible that people begged not to hear it. Why was that, preacher? Why do you think God did that? I don't know. But that's the way God chose to do that. Said that made the hearers beg not another word be spoken, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal, this place so sacred that even if an animal wandered to it, much less an unconsecrated person, that animal would be executed. Indeed, it was so terrifying the sight that Moses said. I tremble with fear. Mount Sinai, the old covenant, God being presented as awful, awesome, terrible. How do you justify that preacher? I don't know. God did it and God had his reasons. That's the old covenant. The old covenant was he gave commands. And those commands had to be followed. I said, but you, you and me, that's not the mountain you came to. This is the mountain of the new covenant. You have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. What you come to is innumerable angels and festive songs and singing. You've come to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. What I have, here's the assembly of the firstborn. We talked about a 101 year history of this church singing songs. You are sitting here in this place right now and if you close your eyes, you can see faces who've now gone on to be with the Lord. And they were influential in this community. They were influential in your life. And what we've come to is Mount Zion and to the assembly of all those firstborn. Man, what a beautiful picture this guy's painting. What an argument he's making. What you come to is to God the judge of all and you have come to all the spirits of the righteous made perfect and you've come to Jesus, the mediator of a whole new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. What a beautiful picture. What a contrast between the old covenant and the new covenant. No wonder, no wonder John, when he writes of heaven, cannot adequately explain it. It is going to be something so beautiful that we don't have the mental equipment to handle it. So far beyond what we can ask or imagine, this is what we've been called to. We've been called to Jesus, not a mountain full of fire. As we read that passage, as that passage was read about the woman who was crippled for those many years, grace was that one day Jesus showed up in her life and he laid his hands on her and she was no longer a cripple. She accepted that grace of God and a whole new beautiful life started. But on the other hand, 
there were those Pharisees. And when that woman was liberated from her infirmities and from her pain and from her past, they objected and said, look, you, can, you got six days to do this. You don't need to be doing this on the Sabbath. Jesus said, look, you hypocrites, you would even let your donkey out to get a drink of water on the Sabbath. How much more so does the grace of God want to apprehend this woman who's been paralyzed all this time? The upshot of it was is that she accepted Jesus and they rejected Jesus. You think people that drink are going to hell? I don't know. I'm in labor, not management. What about people who are like sexually active? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know that there are better ways to live life and there are worse ways to live life, but that doesn't have anything to do, I think, with whether or not we go to hell or not. But the writer in Hebrews, as he's making the argument of salvation by grace through faith, is saying what you better not do is reject Jesus. That's what sends a person to hell. And for all these centuries, God has been making overtures to the world through Jesus Christ. And over and over and over again, Jesus has been rejected and Jesus has been accepted. But the most heinous thing that a person can do the thing that cannot be undone is to reject the grace of God in Jesus Christ. Listen to this. <clears throat> See to it, then. Mount Sinai over here in all of its terror and Jesus Christ over here in all of his beauty. It says, See to it, that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. For if they of Mount Sinai did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one that warns us from heaven? Rejection of Jesus Christ is a serious thing because in it what we're doing is that we're rejecting the love and the mercy and the grace and the hope of God and his kingdom. So yes, is there a hell? Yes. All that other stuff, I don't know. But I know one thing. You can't reject Jesus. Please don't reject Jesus. That's what we're doing in the world, influencers. We are people proclaiming in our own individual ways, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope we do it with such beauty and such hope that people will accept him and not reject him because to reject him is eternal and to accept him is eternal as well. You ready
say one more thing as we get ready to go. I hope you do take upon yourself the ownership of going out into this world and being an influence on people. That's exactly why God made us the church, to influence the world around us. But I would say this. When you go out and when you offer Christ, when you go out and you're speaking to souls who are wounded and hurt, let them know that you have come to Mount Zion, not Mount Sinai. You've come to the city of the living God. You've come to a different covenant. You have come to the beautiful, to the festive celebration. You have come to a gathering of angels and a gathering of saints. You have come to Jesus Christ, the arbiter and the judge of the entire universe. You have come to salvation and eternal life by God's grace. And you have come to the beauty of Jesus Christ our Lord. Let that be the proclamation and the invitation you make to the people of this world. You go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit as we sing these last verses.